And we are here at episode two of Walk the Dragon, of course, America's favorite talk show, America's according favorite. to me. Yeah, yeah And you, well, and yeah, hopefully the I people are doing production, hopefully, because otherwise that'd suck. Mm -hmm. Yes, but of course, uh, we're gonna talk about all things Dragon Ball here. And uh, Dragon Ball Fighters, right? So one of the main things we can talk about, let's start off the show. Of course, my lovely co-host, Mark, what's going on, man? Oh, not much, you know. I, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and just, I wanna put Dragon Ball right here for yes. a second. And I wanna okay. talk about something else. Because right you said before we were off, or we were, we were before we were oh, on the air, no. that Yu Yu Hakusho was ass, and I am not gonna let you get away with it. And I was gonna say, Yu Yu Hakusho is one of the greatest anime and manga franchises in the world. And I know we're here to talk about Dragon Ball, but I feel like if I don't say this oh, now, man. you're going to take something wrong with my earpiece? Can you say that again? You said, oh, dra drag? You, a drag? You, you oh, yeah. So welcome to Rock the Dragon mm. again, episode mm. two. Now, of course, we're going to start off talking about the lovely anime. We were at, like, 129, and we yep. have the battle going on. Finally, the faded battle that everyone was looking for. You know, no spirit gun needed. Of course, we are in Jiren versus Goku, Ultra Instinct on the path to being mastered. So what did you think about it, man? Okay, so this entire episode was basically set to kind of have uh, uh, Whis and some of the other surviving gods and angels talk about Ultra Instinct, what that yeah, means, true, true. talk about Jiren and his strength and what yeah. Goku brought to the table and how he was just so uh, adaptable in this fight to yeah. pull out a whole new form, a whole new source of energy and use that to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jiren. Now, the one thing that, that uh, I thought about through this whole episode and that resonated with me is that Goku is always looking for a whole new transformation, yeah. a whole new source of power, yeah. uh, in, uh, in a means to try to get the ad advantage in a fight. Jiren, on the other hand, just is. He just is. He's just ultimate power. Yeah. He is strength in every sense of the word. He doesn't have a new transformation. He doesn't have to power up. He is that strong. And I was thinking about it like this. It's like when you're picking up like a gallon of milk, right? Yeah, it's super yeah. easy, picking mm -hmm. up a gallon of milk, no big deal. You're not using all your strength to pick up that gallon of milk. And that's how Jiren has treated all these fights. Yeah. Beating these guys up is just, it only takes this much strength to do, no big deal. Right. He's not powering up. He's just, there's no reason to exert that yeah, much strength. Exactly. So now that Goku has reached a, a whole new level of power, Jiren is like, okay, now I'm going to show my what I got. Yeah. And I, uh, I, I got to say, now more than ever, the way that this episode went, I want Jiren to win this more than anything. Yeah. I, it, ne it needs to happen. And I, I know we talked about this before, but how do you still feel about that? Are we still on the same page that Jiren needs Oh, to yeah, win no, this? of course. Okay. Come on, man. Of course. I mean, I feel like a lot of people want it. I know people at home want it, too. It's something where, like, look, man, um, especially if you've been reading the manga, right? Um, obviously, we'll be talking about that in later episodes, yep. but even in the manga, they actually fleshed out Jiren's, like, general story more so. And he's, like, he's a lovable guy. He's just, like, this super strong guy who's just, like, really cares for his universe. So much so that he's like, oh, yeah, you be the god of destruction. You can have ultimate power. And even from the backstory that we've heard from the anime, it seems like that should be even more reason why he should want to be, you know, just be the strongest, right? But obviously, he truly cares about people to the point where he's, like, he actually didn't want to leave his universe. He only left his universe because he's like, oh, I can get a wish of the Dragon Balls. And also, he made a deal with um, Belmond. If like, hey, if anything happens in the universe, best believe I'm gonna be back. That's actually what he said. So I think he's someone cool to root for. I think it would be good for the story and development if Goku loses here. But at the same time, it's weird because we've also gotten a revelation that now Apparently, like, you know, not even the rest of the gods have mastered Ultra Instinct yet. Right. But we're seeing Goku apparently in a mastered form. So what does that say about where these guys are power level wise, you know? Like, how if Jiren beats him, which I feel it should happen, right. where does that even put Jiren? Is Jiren like nearing angel form? Like, is that what we're seeing with him? Because it seems like Goku's like kind of in that middle ground now as well. It looks like he surpassed the gods, but he's like not an angel. Yet. So we touched base on this before, and it seems like energy levels in Dragon Ball are always fluctuating, changing. They don't mm -hmm. really mean a whole lot until kind of like now, because mm -hmm. we have gods and angels, and that puts things into a bit more of a perspective. Right, right. But every god that's in the position of being a god of destruction, per se, let alone all the other countless gods that could exist among the universes, right? It's, it's something that can be obtained through training, devotion to power, to becoming stronger, like all these other things. Like yeah. you can just work real hard and you can get there. Right. So it, it, it's one of those things where Goku and Jiren, these two clearly, and Vegeta even as well, 
have the massive potential to succeeding and far exceeding expectations of the gods and yeah. overpowering them. Right, right, the right. angels have obviously a, a whole other level worth of strength that we don't really know like yeah. where that caps out right, right. But as far as we know, at this point in time, Goku and Jiren are the absolute strongest. And by the end of the episode, when Beerus is looking at Goku as he starts to master this form in what, like under 40 minutes or some yeah, crazy like, amount of time, <laughs> yeah. like he just looks at it and, and before like Beerus could even utter any words, the expression on the character's animated face, I'm looking at it and I'm like, Goku now, I feel like, could stomp Beerus. I feel like. Maybe I'm wrong, but the way that he reacted, it looked like yeah. the face of Goku did it with my training and help. He's now stronger than me. I'm still a god, but Goku win this fight. It's kind of like the, yeah. the, the expression. It, I, I felt got. like he had the typical anime face when, you know, when a character, like, is just super strong and they're just like, oh, my, oh my. like, even they said in the thing, right, he's like, oh, what an unbelievable guy. And he's just like, oh, <laughs> like, they always do that in the anime. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> This guy's just insane. And it's like, usually, like, that's a clear indicator, like, yeah, this guy's another level than this person now. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping it's not necessarily the case. Like, maybe he's, like, mastered it, but he's still, like, his base strength isn't at the level of Beerus. But, man, like, it's crazy to gauge where they're going to be. And I feel like so far the anime is not, hasn't been really the greatest when it comes to, like, the power level structure. No, I agree. Um, so... I'm hoping that by the time we roll around to this point in the manga, maybe we'll have a better, like, clear understanding because the manga's done a lot better with dealing with power Definitely. Levels. It got so. rid of, like, the fluff. The dialogue, I think, is a lot more crisp and to the point. Mm -hmm. Like, there's not a lot of extra words. You know, right. they're not using 20 words when five words will do. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing about this particular episode in the anime, and sometimes it does a good job of this, and this is, this is one of those shining examples. Yeah. Uh, is Vegeta, okay? He's he's not in the episode. He's not the center focus. He's not the main uh, attention grabber for the audience. Yeah. But he steps out and he says something really important to Universe 11's clown god, Bell, whatever, Bell, Bell, <laughs> Bell, 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 whatever. The I clown know, god. Like, the clown god. <laughs> what the, a god clown. The, the god of clowns, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and as Bell is sitting here, like, talking trash on Goku, saying Jiren's got this battle in the bag, mm -hmm. Vegeta steps up. And remember, Vegeta is always angry that Goku is right. one or many steps ahead, okay? But at this point, Vegeta steps up and he reminds this god that, hey, like, that's a saying in the ring. He got a whole new transformation. He's now, like, getting to the point where he's mastering it. We've seen countless different Saiyans from different universes amongst this battle uh, move to a whole new uh, plateau of strength and yeah. power and master it in an instant. Yeah. So when he's sitting here talking trash on Goku, Vegeta's like kind of demonstrating, well, you know what? It's not me in the ring, but it is a Saiyan in the ring. Yeah. And for that, I'm proud. Yeah. And for that, I'm happy. And remember, a Saiyan has endless potential. Yeah. And we're seeing that countless times throughout this fight. And Goku has now reached a, a, a whole new level again. Right. And that's where everyone just kind of like, it's like, oh, well, Vegeta makes a good point. We just got to sit here and just shut our mouths because clearly Goku yeah. can still go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this new, like, silver version exactly. of himself. And you know what? I love that. And I'm glad that you actually said that, too. Because the thing about it is you got to look at... I feel like Vegeta's interaction with the Gods of Destruction is very different than Goku's. You have to remember all the way back in the original part of his story where, you know, he saw his father being crushed by this person who eventually found out was Beerus. And it's like this whole idea that they're, like, so beyond. And even how you saw how he, he acted around Beerus... How he would, he would always be the one to like try to bow. I mean, this guy was doing this. Remember that skating dance he did to like yeah. appease him? He's like, yep, that weird, crazy thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like, the weird ass thing. Like, I don't even know what he was doing. Like, it was just ridiculous. But he did it because he felt it was necessary for everyone to survive. Right. But now you're looking at a Vegeta who now feels, even in himself, justified at looking at the gods and being like, shut up. Yep. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm a saying, baby. We know what we do. And I, wonder, I love that. And I wonder, because that's also something else to consider, too, is anytime Vegeta ever showed any small, single iota of respect to anyone, you knew they were a big deal. Yeah. Like, when you saw, just kind of, you know, not in the canon, but when you saw, like, the Broly movie and he showed that fear, like, that first Broly appearance, yeah, and he's, yeah. like, he's a legendary Super yeah. Saiyan, there's no reason to fight, yep. like, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, this is uh, a much bigger deal than <laughs> yeah. we realize, because yep, yep. Vegeta's panicking. Mm -hmm. And then you look at Frieza sometimes, where he was, like, you know, keeping himself in check around Frieza until he, he felt strong enough to where he could maybe go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Frieza. And then later on, same thing with Beerus. He showed yeah. that respect, and now he's super strong. He feels like he's earned that respect and that he doesn't have to dish it back because he's outclassed them with his power. Absolutely. So this episode, I think, did a really great job of not only, once again, taking another step further into Vegeta's character development in, like, the fourth arc that we've had 
uh, with a variety of different characters, particularly with Vegeta showcasing like his respect, his strength, his pride regarding Goku, which I think is always awesome when he showcases mm -hmm. that. Um, and it just felt like a good episode. It did yeah. drag on a little bit, but it was a rad fight. And oh, I yeah. definitely enjoyed this a lot more than the long like freeze dynamic battle. Absolutely. And you know, I think we're all excited to see what's gonna happen next, right? Um, of course, the uh, next episode is going to come out on Sophie, dude. So it's going to be big. It's been crazy. But again, of course, I'm hoping to see that we get that master Ultra Instinct or Jiren. I want to see those characters in Dragon Ball Fighters, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. <laughs> but, uh, even like Dragon Ball Fighters. So it's been kind of reaching up to its crazy like climax like you've seen a lot of players are coming out of the woodworks now mm -hmm. you're kind of seeing who are going to be the best in the game and so it's been really exciting for this game um too just to kind of see like it's had its own little like tournament of power with all these new people from different like instead of universes like different sub genres of yeah, the fgc come out and show their work you know and i know there's a lot of people also at home you guys also want to know how you can be the best at this game so um you know, I wanted to talk to a little bit, like, to the people about the mechanics, man. We talked about it briefly, but I wanted to go into details. So, um, obviously, uh, we go into game. When you initially start playing this game, you'll notice that you have, like, so you have three normal buttons, right? You have your light, you have your medium, and you have your heavy. Sure. Um, of course, if you go to light, that's going to be your quickest one, right? So right. that's going to be your quickest attack. And also, if you press it repeatedly, you'll do your auto combo. So that auto combo will usually just go to an air combo, and then you'll knock the people down. And it's like, you know, it's pretty cool. You know, if you're someone who just started playing these games, it's like, it's hype, right? Because you just get your little cool combo and you knock them down. Minimal damage, right. though, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah, minimal, minimal damage, but it's still like, it's useful, right? Um, in particular, it's actually really useful in the air because your character will actually move upwards with the opponent. So sometimes there's certain combos when you can't do it manually. You actually have to use that auto combo to get closer to them. So there's a little cool stuff in there where I like that, where they combine the two. Um, then you have, of course, your medium. Um, that's going to be the one that's going to be a combination of like obviously not as fast as your quick attack but it's going to be you know uh it's going to be stronger than that right and that you can do a combo if you do your auto combo there you do a cool combo into a special move into a super so those ones look pretty hype they're like oh, really yeah. quick like you know everyone's spamming that like when you oh, first definitely. play the game you remember the demo everyone is just like yeah. yeah so so far like i've got three core characters i play as and one of them uh -huh. uh, is uh, is adult gohan and yeah. one of my favorite things about adult gohan is he has that uh brotherly kamehameha where yeah, yeah. little goten jumps in as a super saiyan they do that like yeah, major yeah. blast yeah, yeah like i i have won no fights at all actually because i'm terrible but i've pulled <laughs> off i've pulled off a lot of really good moves i think uh every now and again with that yeah. joint brother command yeah, yeah. and it's rad to watch because the animations are amazing and i feel like i know what i'm doing when i pull that move off and i'm like yeah i just pulled off that great move and then i get stomped in the ground by whoever i'm fighting because right. i'm not any good at the game but right. but still like pulling off those amazing combos when you're like a noob to this this genre like i am it feels awesome and it looks really cool yeah absolutely absolutely and so it's like yeah, that is just something that i really love that they actually put that into the system of the game because it allows you just to be overall like you feel fun you can feel the nuances of just playing a Dragon Ball game, right? right? So you have those cool things in the game as well. Um, of course, you have the you know cool combo system. Um, it shows you if it's blue, then it's untrue combo. Um, of course, if it's going to be that yellowish tinge, then it's actually going to be a true combo. All the little things to let you know if you're someone who just kind of getting into fighters that like, okay, like what you need to be looking for, right? Of course, you have your assist gauge and stuff too. You utilize those things, and then you have your key gauge, which you're going to be using for either doing for vanishes. Um, vanishes are pretty cool. It's like you press, uh, um, you're gonna press special and light and then that's what you're gonna be able to do to, you're gonna teleport behind the opponent and then you're gonna utilize that in order to, you can actually add it in your combos. And right? a single teleport gets one key bar down, right? Or one like key chunk down, isn't that correct? Like when you're doing a teleport behind yeah, someone? Yeah, so it's gonna be, yeah, okay. so it's gonna be one bar. Um, so the cool thing about um, that in general is it's something that you utilize to extend combos, but it's also something that escape option. So there's a lot of cool uh, nuances in fighters in which uh, things will be a combination of, right? Where it's gonna be, okay, you're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do, like a super dash is gonna be something that's kind of like a instant air dash, right? But at the same time, it's gonna have its nuances. It homes in on the opponent, so you can't like do anything like the mix up from there uh, as like much. It's not gonna be as technical. Uh, but at the same time, because of that, like, 
you're more susceptible to getting opened up, right? You can get hit with a, like a 2H, which is going to be your launcher. Sure. Um, okay, for those who may not know the number of notation, that's going to be a down, down heavy punch, right? So I don't know down heavy things. attack basically, right? And so you're going to do that, and that's where you're going to get your launcher. You do your stuff from there. Um, but yeah, so like it's just it's cool because the game is very like simplistic in this way, and it, it allows you to use even some of the stuff that you learn at the base level of the game. They end up being still important to use. They don't just die out. Like sometimes you have auto combos in, like say, like Marvel, right? Sure. And you do the auto combos, and once you learn, and once you get to a certain level, you're never going to use that crap again because it's trash. Sure. But it's cool because in fighters, you still find uses for it. It just becomes like it just adds to the overall depth of the game. Mechanics-wise in Dragon Ball Fighters, I found that the hardest thing for me personally is just getting the timing right. I mean, that makes all the difference in the world. A fraction of a second can mean like a make or break deal when you're trying to pull off a combination or something some something super special or super big to take down your opponent. And that leaves you wide open because you're vulnerable. Now, because I'm still kind of learning the like the techniques and the different combinations between like light, heavy, um, and any combination thereof mm -hmm. with medium, it, it, it puts me in this position where I'm trying to remember these button combos so I'm, I'm trying to find some best tactics or strategy to kind of get out of that mindset because I'm trying to memorize all these combos and I'm hitting these buttons and if I don't hit it just right then I'm screwed and I've completely the wrong button or the wrong direction or something and then all of a sudden I'm getting completely obliterated by whoever I'm going up against like what am I going to do if I'm not memorizing those combos right. is there something like is there something else that I could do to be better in that way like where how do I improve in this area so one of the cool things too going back to some of the um, auto combos is there's a lot of general rules of thumb that you can utilize in like comboing in general that can help you out for example usually the most basic combo is going to be that you're going to go uh, you're always going to go in increasing order so you're going to do you know light medium heavy uh, you can do like say uh, light medium go into down heavy right or 2h as we talked about before that's going to be your launcher um, you go into a super dash and then you can go back into it again light medium heavy and that's your like super basic combo right so that's something you can do pretty much with the entire cast super easy to do um, and that's essentially what your auto combo with light attack is going to be doing. Okay, let me ask you about that real quick because that makes sense and I haven't considered this before. So when you're doing a light, medium, heavy, like in that order, the mm -hmm. reason why you would do that, I would assume, would be because you can pull off the light the quickest, stagger your opponent, get him off the off the ground or whatever, jump into like a medium to do something a little bit more powerful to keep that chain going, and then heavy to super smash because chances are they're staggered to the point where recovery is less likely because you've hit him with the two preceding attacks, right? Light, medium, and then you finish with the heavy. Is that the reason why you'd want to do that? Kind of. So basically what happens in like usually in fighters is uh, you'll have chain combos, right? So uh, you'll have, if you do a certain sequence, uh, those things will cancel the general end lag of something, and so you can go from there. And then you have certain combos that are, um, if they're not going to be chained, they're like going to be links. Those are really going to be like the move is actually going to end. So you'll actually get the cooldown of the light, but then you still have enough frame advantage to actually hit another button. Uh, a lot of the general combos that you're going to see in that regard in terms of Dragon Ball, like what we're talking about, and when they're going to light, medium, heavy, those are going to be chain attacks. So it's basically that if you do a medium, it will cancel the jab, right? Or cancel the light attack. And then if you do a heavy while you're doing a medium, it's going to go ahead and cancel that medium and go from there. Gotcha. So it's going to allow those things to just be um, that much easier to pull off. Okay. Um, and so, but there's cool things because there's also exceptions to that rule. So adult Gohan, once he goes to like level seven and he's like fully, um, like unlocked all his potential, then he's basically able to actually do something that's unique. He's actually able to interrupt that rule. So he can like do stuff where he's like going from heavy and then going back into lights and stuff. And so he gets a lot mm -hmm. of different combo trees because of the nature of that character. So you, ha you do have a little exceptions, but overall, basically it's gonna follow the kind of rule of thumb, right? Going in increasing order. He's one of my main playable characters, and I did not know that. Yeah. Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> but it's all good, right? It's like it's all about kind of learning that stuff. And as you like start realizing these little nuances, it helps you not only like pick up new characters, but really understand what is important, what you need to focus on. So my my three playable characters are Goku Black, uh, Trunks, and Adult Gohan. I don't know if those are the three best starters. I mean, granted, everybody has their own kind of like 
perks and benefits of using, but I mean, among all the available characters, for someone who's just starting out, like, did I pick a bad team, or is there some, like, easier combination of three characters I can get that are a little better player? I mean, it's funny that you say that, but you have Goku Black on your team. So Goku Black is probably, like, he's definitely one of the top tier characters right now definitely. that people are seeing. Um, a lot of people just like the character, too. So, like, I feel like you got, like, a pretty solid team. Uh, you do see Adult Gohan. Uh, Nikhil uses uh, Adult Gohan. Uh, everyone just in general thinks uh, Adult Gohan's fairly strong. Mm -hmm. So, I think overall, like, your team's solid. Uh, and Trunks, actually, initially, people didn't know where Trunks would be. But now you've seen Trunks kind of, like, move forward. People have just gotten better with optimizing a lot of his combos and stuff. So, I mean, obviously, you're seeing that a lot in the tournament scene right now. <laughs> So right now in the tournament scene, we've had uh, pretty crazy stuff. We do have final round that's going to be coming up soon. And, and what is final round? So final round is just a major uh, fighting game tournament, right? And the cool thing about this one, it happens annually. Okay. But the thing that's special about it is we're actually going to have a tournament in which Goichi, who is Japan's best and arguably the best Dragon Ball fighter player right now, and then you have Sonic Fox, who is America's best. Oh, right. We talked about yeah. that in the last yep. episode about how Sonic yep. Fox was talking trash, right? Exactly. Okay. So right, now right. you're about to see it all come to a head. And these guys are not only going to play in a tournament, which they're expected to both meet each other in grand finals, but they're also going to be playing a first to ten. So it's that's going to be super nuts because... So usually in uh, fighting games, right, as you are able to actually play more with people that's where you really get to see like who's kind of better. The longer sets, usually it's less about gimmicks and it's more about adaptation and moving forward. Same thing like, okay, if you and I are playing rock, paper, scissors, right? And it's like, say we're playing right now, right? We're All playing right. right now, ready? So rock, paper, scissors, okay? All right, so now we're at, of course, we're at scissors, so let's go again. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Damn it, you knew what I was gonna do, that's bullshit. Adaptation, man. <gasps> See, but you know what? The reason why, I'm sorry I had to do that to you, by the way. I understand. I'm, I'm just I understand. Okay. But the reason why is like, again, as you get more information from your opponent and you're doing these things, that is where you're going to actually be able to, like, you evolve there, right? Because now all the secrets are out there. Sometimes you'll have these one trick things and it's like, yeah, that will work because no one knows about it. But then now they know about it, it's like, this not really that effective. But now it really comes down to now fundamentals, it comes down to conditioning. Um, and it just comes down to like be your awareness of that as well as you know spatial recognition all those kind of things um, just like trying to make people focus on particular things as well so you can condition them better so it becomes a lot of those things so them playing the first to ten is something that is really going to kind of showcase to a lot of people who the official best Dragon Ball fighters with that is. fight though I mean do you think that right now it's anybody's game or do you actually have a like a clear eh, do you have an idea as to who you feel is going to win have you thought about mm. it i mean is that something you can consider actually i think that so it's weird because sonic fox argues that he's got like the best neutral okay. right? he's always about neutral all the time you always talk about neutral um goichi this guy has always been phenomenal in a multitude of games uh he's started with anime fighters for a while now and but his optimization like he like, he touches characters, and they're gone. Hmm. Like, they're dead. No Shenron. Like, you're done. You're just dead. You're dead. Right? So that's what he does. So it's going to be really interesting because I think it's going to come down to really uh, just defense. If Sonic Fox defense is going to be up to par or Goichi's defense would be up to par because both of them are going to be offensive powerhouses in different ways. Um, but in this game, I think it's more offensive-oriented. So you really got to see who's going to be able to weather the storm and whoever's going to be able to do that then i think it's going to be the one who's going to be clear victor i think that if they both kind of have similar defense i do think goichi may be the one to pull out simply because it seems like his damage output's better than sonic fox right now but we'll see how it goes obviously you're gonna have an american crowd there too so that's gonna be a factor so it's gonna be pretty cool but and where is this being held at final round man i think it's gonna be in atlanta i think it's in atlanta georgia i think that's where it's at dope yeah so it's going to be sick. It's going to be super nuts. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for it. So everyone's probably going to be watching that. But now also, too, like, it's crazy because, like I said, optimization. 
Like, that's what everyone's looking for now. Everyone's trying to get into a space where, yes, they're learning nuances of the game, but people are getting so much better at doing crazy-ass combos. In fact, we've had a ton of the Twitter sphere send us a ton of things. They've sent us some really good content, and I think people need to check it out, so. I think that we should. Where's Go the camera? Ahead. Over here. There it is. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, right there. Red light. Check mm. it. Yep. <laughs> I was about to just say how much how great that freaking Goku Black combo was. Freaking sick, like three level ones, dude, like back to back. Naturally. Yeah, you know, because, you know, I want to talk about some greatness. Absolutely. Like yes. Yu Yu Hakusho, no. for sure. It's can, you stop, can you stop lying to the people? It's a what great are you doing? manga and anime. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Jesus. Jeez, All right. man. All right, fine. Goku Black combo. Fine. <sighs> Carry on. Carry on. Fine, fine, fine. Whatever. All right. I think that um, overall, like, I'm just so excited to see what people are going to do with this game, man. Like, as the combos get, like, just more and more juicy, like, you just see people, they're playing this game now, and they're just like, you get hit, and you're like, man, that's the end of my character. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's it. Like, it's gone. You know? And that's how, um, that's how it becomes, you know, once you get there. Because usually... Everyone tries to find out all the offensive stuff first, right? right? You always want to know your combos. You want to know how to mix someone up. You want to you want to know all the cheap stuff that makes people mad, that makes them rage, right? That's what people do. Oh, yeah. And then it's only later on when people start getting better defense, and it kind of mellows out. So we're like at this point right now where everyone just wants to hurt everyone. So I don't. Know, I'm super excited. I love the stuff that we've been seeing on Twitter, guys. If you guys have anything you guys want to send to us, please do so. Let us know so we can showcase it on the show because. We want to be able to appreciate all the lab monsters out there because we know there's people out there just going in. So we appreciate you guys. Yes, we do. Yeah. So as of right now, I've been getting, uh, so when we're talking about the Twitter buzz, right? I've had uh -huh. a lot of people being kind of mentioning me or uh, talking to me on stream and talking to me in other social media platforms asking when the eSports arena is going to be doing something with Dragon Ball Fighters. So do we, is there anything that we're going to be doing here at some point? I mean, oh, we've got that's... this amazing show, I this know, amazing opportunity, know, but like, when am I going to be able to step into the arena of a tournament and face you like man to man? When are we going to do something like that? Oh, when are we going to play? Yeah, I want to be able to fight you. We'll go first to ten. Oh. And then I'll take on Goichi right after. Well, <laughs> I don't think Koichi's going to waste his time playing you. <laughs> but. He's a smart guy. But. <laughs> I'm a bitch. I mean, I'm not going to play that guy. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's pretty But we're definitely, we're definitely looking to do um, some Dragon Ball stuff in the future. 
Um, we want to work well with uh, the developer, obviously Bandai Namco. They've always been a terrific company. They've always, you know, make they want to make sure their games are represented right. Yeah. And they, it's a love and a passion for them. You've seen that in the way they've handled Tekken. Sure. And even the Tekken um, World Championship, it was just like, the championship was just amazing. Like, it was just great. It was felt grassroots. It felt like you just had the homies there, and they were looking at the best. And that is why everyone loved watching it. And I think they're trying to do that, too, with Dragon Ball. So they I wanted went, to ask, do yeah. you think that has the potential to be up there on Tekken's level in that way? Do you think that there's there's a, a possibility we can go down that road and we can get Oh, there? I mean, I think that Bandai Namco knows. I think we all know that it's actually going to be even higher than Tekken. Really? Yeah. Um, it's People love Dragon Ball, man. All of us. A lot of people, you know, even you're playing fighting games. Sometimes the reason why you're playing these fighting games because, man, you just watch freaking Goku just beat the crap out of Vegeta. Or you were tired of waiting for that damn loop with the <laughs> Frieza arc because, you, you know, <laughs> you never got to watch the whole thing. Yep. You know, it's, it's an intrinsic part of the culture, I believe, in the fighting game community. And I think that's why a lot of people were just really drawn to it. And, of course, tied with the FGC, like, people are going to be watching anime and the whole anime community, you know how they are, to see a game of this magnitude, like, they love it because it's, a, it's something that they love. Like, even people, the gateway for a lot of these people, like, just to play, like, just to play any of these games or, like, start watching anime, Dragon Ball. It was for me. I can yeah. tell you that right now. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of fighting games that I played, and I didn't do a ton, but when I did, a lot of it had to do with the, the inspiration that I got from Dragon Ball. Exactly. And that was the first anime I ever saw. And it definitely is what kind of fueled my passion to love other great anime shows, like Yu Yu Hakusho, for example, is a, is a masterpiece. It's really good, so that's a, that's another one. Um, but uh, regarding the the future of Dragon Ball Fighters, I mean, it's obviously a really uh, impactful game on the community in the FGC. Yeah. Obviously, we have the show center around it, so we're going to be talking a lot more about uh, maybe character centered focused episodes where we talk about a specific character, its combos, and how you at home can be better at that particular character, in addition to going over more along the, the manga of Dragon Ball Super, the remaining episodes of Dragon Ball Super, right. and then, of course, just celebrating Dragon Ball as a whole, because that is what Rock the Dragon is all about. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. But, you know, I think it is time for us to get some games in, after all. But I just wanted to ask you, man, what's yeah. better, Final Flash or Spirit Gun? Look, I mean, you're comparing apples to oranges here at this point. I'm just, oh, come on, this is not even fair. You can cry, man. I'm just, I'm trying to cover your eyes. I am not, I'm not, I'm not crying, okay? The lights are a little bit too bright, and, you know, I poke myself in the eye, and it just, it doesn't matter. Well, Look, obviously, we all know the answer. Thank you, guys. Of course, this will not be our final flash. We will definitely come in for another episode, and another episode after that. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I think it's time for us to... Play some matches, man. You can Yoko sit. Karama was amazing. Oh, no one cares Come on. about that. D Bye, dude. D See ya. Hie with the Laters. green and all the all eyes right. and everything you got was it. fantastic. Tagoro Brothers, the Tagoro Brothers. B class, B class demons, man. I'm telling you. No one cares. Everybody cares. No one cares.